Agriculture has an impact on the environment, like anything else humans do. It's probably one of the biggest interfaces where humanity and nature connect. Animals and plants have always coexisted. What we've done in modern agriculture is kind of separated the two. We need to change the farming system. If we don't change, then we will not be able to feed our people. If we have healthy soil, we have high yields, you have more biodiversity, so it's a win-win for everyone. We can't remove ourselves from this environment. And more than that, we're actually part of the solution. The majority of our food comes from 12 inches of soil. For the past 60, 70 years, we've lost a lot of productivity in our soil. As we introduced intensive agriculture, we slowly depleted our soil and the ability of our soil to sequester carbon. We need to find different ways of farming to make sure that we're protecting the environment and make sure that what we're doing is sustainable long term. The core purpose of the farm of the future is for us to investigate and understand the benefit of regenerative agriculture, to find new ways of producing potatoes and actually improve yield and quality by working to integrate nature in our process and try to limit our emissions of greenhouse gases. The beauty of potatoes is that it's a crop that's extremely nutritious. It provides not only a good source of carbohydrate, but also of proteins and minerals. It's the third most important crop after rice and wheat for human consumption. So it's important that we continue to farm potatoes in a way that we can farm it for the future. One of the catalysts of the project was a study that McCain conducted about five years ago to try to understand the impact of climate change on potato production. We're seeing crop failures. There's a big swings in yield depending on year, which is caused by the weather and the climate. In New Brunswick here, and especially in the past few years, we have a lot of intense rainfall. When it rains a lot, the significant amount of your soil is washing away from your field. And the top layer of your soil is very important because this is where there's more nutrient, there's more organic matter. Having a healthier soil really helps. We'll be able to take some punch and be resilient. If you have a healthy soil, you have a healthy crop. Regenerative agriculture is about how do I foster a healthy ecosystem. So instead of just taking nutrients and taking resources, we actually integrate and put those resources back into the soil. And there's a variety of different ways that we've been doing this in the past. A lot of these techniques are not new. For example, cover cropping or integrating livestock. This is something that has been part of farming since the very start. We wanted to increase the biodiversity. If you plant cover crops, you can increase the population of beneficial bacteria. You can improve your water infiltration. They can protect your ground from any kind of soil erosion. Yesterday, we planted our potatoes. See how good soil structure we have. And so our soil is not compacted at all. If you see a lot of earthworms in your soil, that means your soil is perfect. By this organic fertilization, you can cut in your synthetic fertilizers. So we have cut 15% in nitrogen, we have cut 40% in phosphorus, and around 50% in potassium. A typical grower, they plow their field, they don't plant these cover crops. This is our control field where we have not planted any cover crops. So this field is more compacted and here you don't see any earthworms. We want to show this to our growers that if you implement the regenerative practices, you can improve your soil health very quickly. As you walk around the farm and look at what we're doing, you'll find that our tractor are a little weird looking. When you're rolling equipment on the soil, you will always compact it. What we're trying to do with controlled traffic is limit the amount of the soil that is impacted by compaction. Compaction is just change everything. The plant roots don't establish, don't go as deep. There's not as much oxygen and the water tends to run out. So it means also in rolling landscape, more soil is leaving your field. 
Control traffic farming means the soil is fluffier, there's pores, the water percolate through it, so it will improve your biodiversity and your nutrients and the plant's health. We're also introducing a lot of technologies to make sure that we're using the right product at the right time for the right purposes. If you look at this soil, you can look as hard as you like, you're not really going to see any of these organisms, and that's just the nature of soil. It has hidden life in it. But what you can do is extract DNA using this technology called DNA metabarcoding. Soil is thought to be one of the most diverse terrestrial ecosystems that we know of, so this tiny tube will have quite a lot of life in it. There's three large groups that we're looking to examine, bacteria, fungi, and animals. These soil microorganisms are key to locking that carbon into the soil. We can take advantage of all of this technology and get a better understanding of what lives there and then use that information to get an understanding of, is this management practice actually helping soil health? One of the big objective of Farm the Future is to really create the science, create the practices, and extend that knowledge to growers. So making sure that growers within the McCain world start implementing those practices as easily as possible. Right now, we've established two farms of the future, one here, one in South Africa. The practices that we do here are very local, but the principles are really global. The idea is for us to cover globally our needs by establishing only a few farms and make sure that we cover all of the ecological system to bring the technologies and practices all around the world. With the farm of the future, it's the scale of it that is very unusual. So it's a wonderful project to be part of. It's very important for us to find a way to bring back as much diversity as possible in our production system, in our environment, to make sure that we've got clean air, clean water, and a climate that we can live in and prosper. The piece that we've been missing is how do we give back soil organisms what they give us, and how do we enter into this mutually beneficial relationship? And once we kind of crack that, we unleash this sustainable food system that we're all looking for.